Hello and welcome again to interview with DJ Nocturna. Um, today on the show, I'm, I'm happy to welcome back on the show the one and only singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and bassist for Throwing Muses and Belly during the the early days, which is actually the best days for, in my opinion, for Throwing Muses and Belly, <laughs> Fred Among, who is not only a musician, but also an amazing astrologer on not just one, <laughs> but two types of astrology, so Vedic and Western astrology. So... And I wouldn't have known that if it wasn't for that interview we did um, a few months ago on, on yeah. your music part. But yep. you know, and I was so when when I found out you're an astrologer, I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you know, to have that to have that two part, you know, that two talent and that gift to be an astrologer and not just one but two two types of astrology. I know there's many out there, of course, but sure. Those are the, I mean, Vedic astrology is, is, is I, don't, I don't know it too well. I hardly know it at all, to be honest, even though one of my best friends is a Vedic astrologer. Mm. And, uh, and, and of course, the Western astrology, which is both astrology are so accurate. I mean, I have to say, because I had readings forever and I know, and anybody out there who is, who doesn't believe in astrology, listen up. <laughs> <laughs> they, be they may still not believe, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? I know, yeah, they got too many uh, Capricorn gifts, <clears throat> maybe in their birth chart. Or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But and of course, your your music. We talked about it. You you released an album in July for Fear Pageant, and now you have another one that just you're just we just talking about recently. Yep, piano bass. Really? It's, yeah, it's all uh, keyboard. I'm um, sort of the first record I've ever recorded that's purely virtual instruments you know, MIDI, MIDI controlled instruments and, um, it's 10 songs. Um, it's a little bit more experimental than anything I've ever done. And when you hear it, you'll know what I'm, what I mean by that. Uh, oh yeah, no, I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm sure it's good. Is it, is it, um, so is, is it, it's all piano then piano? Not necessarily. It's, it's keyboard bass, but they're, they're fully fleshed out songs. So there's drums, there's bass, there's, it sounds like a band. Mm. You know what I mean? I played everything and um, it, there's nothing that's simply piano and vocals, but the piano is the instrument that I wrote yeah. everything on. It was the primary instrument. And I do have another record that I'm finishing right now with um, mixing and mastering. I'm actually done sort of right up to the end of that. It's a, a full band record. Um, so I have a few friends of mine, this is something I actually started back in 2021 and have just been sitting on these songs because I got busy with other stuff. Um, and you know, so I had, <clears throat> basically we did mail order, uh, recording. So I would send these, uh, songs to my friends, Rob Ehlers, who's in the, um, uh, 50 foot wave and the Kristen Hurst trio uh, with me and Kristen uh, he's playing drums and two friends of mine who are actually local uh, are doing bass and guitar and those songs are pretty much done and I'm sort of designing the cover art now and so that might come wow. out next year too so there's sort of two complete oh, yeah, projects you're, you are busy yeah I've been yeah. too busy how do you juggle all of this, you know, with your astrologies? I know you do readings as well, and you do, like, you have a, I mean, you 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 do tutoring as well, right? You have a little a tutoring where you tutor one-on-one -on -one and other stuff, right? So Yeah, I do, and I'm, you know, I'm back in the classroom teaching this semester. And oh, yeah, and that too. As well. I forgot to mention, that's another thing. <laughs> Fred Abong is a PhD. <laughs> yeah. Doctor. Yeah, so, uh, oh, uh, it's just, you're just so amazing. And then, and then you got, um, you know the, these these music thing that you're doing. You play multi instruments, right? Besides the bass and the guitar and the. I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm sort of proficient on on a lot of instruments, um, but not really like a, a virtuoso on any of them. <laughs> I, you know, I can I can make them do what I want them to do. Um, yeah, you're you're probably just being humble, but uh, yeah, that's uh. <laughs> I mean, to, to even like play one or two instruments, I mean, that's, um, and then actually, you know. Well, you know, I mean, most honestly, I would say I don't feel like I'm that unique in that Kristen plays 
multiple instruments. Rob is a probably more of a virtuoso than both myself and Kristen. The guy is amazing. Um, yeah, and then I and I also forgot to mention, and then because you're also in the Kristen in the Kristen Hirsch Electric Trio. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's another thing. So you're you're pretty busy, but you know. I mean, we always make time, right? I mean, I got a lot of stuff going on too, but I make time for whatever it needs to be, what I need to do. Yeah, so. I mean, you know, it's sort of like, I don't think I would survive if I couldn't, Yeah. psychologically, yeah. if I couldn't attend to these things. They, they're sort of necessities for yeah. me. Yeah. They don't, they're not necessarily financially uh, sound, but they're personally satisfying oh yeah yeah totally yeah i mean astrology is like but you know i think it's more prominent now right don't you think don't you feel like more people are it, getting... no it, it absolutely is it's i've i've noticed since when i started maybe 15 20 years ago that it's just you know it's very much a millennial slash gen z have really embraced it mm -hmm. you know it hasn't really if I haven't really quote unquote benefited from that because I'm not really um, I'm not really pursuing it in a marketing sense. So I don't, it's the same kind of clientele that I've had since I began the same, I get like repeat customers and well, occasionally I'll get someone, someone new who comes in, who's a friend of one of the um, yeah. people that I've done readings for. So it's not, it's not gangbusters or anything, but. Well, you know that, that that is a true testament that you that they love what, what you what you did the first time, right? No, I I do I appreciate it. I'm you know like especially when I first started out, it's it's a I've never done readings before. I was more of studying it and to see to get the feedback that it actually works. I mean that's that's kind of always the the surprise is just interpreting basically symbols on a page and trying to use your intuition to put it all together. And then because in particular, the Vedic system is making predictions. Yeah. You're getting feedback about whether or not those predictions were, you know, accurate or not. And not, yeah. not, vague, not vague predictions, like fairly specific. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was reading your testimonials and people were saying that it's wrong. It's really like, timely and everything so that's it's uh, a great system it, it really has a lot i mean that's you'll see when we i mean we're not gonna be able to get too deeply into to this because of you know time constraints but i hope um i can make the vedic stuff less confusing or um you know forbidding for western astrologers because i think both systems if you can use both systems there it's like a double barreled shotgun you can really have a lot of yeah firepower well, now now i'm getting inspired to learn vedic astrology <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, it, it, it's a very technical i mean that's this is when i when i was learning it it was presented to me as like a it's a very technical system whereas the western is a lot more intuitive um mm. so some people just have a block with the <clears throat> the kind of the logic part the the technical remembering all these things it can get kind of overwhelming so it might not be for everybody yeah yeah so you know let's let start let's start i just want to i just want to let people know so uh, you know if you can if you can just say like tell us like how did you get into it like from the very beginning because you were always music music a music guy right yeah i mean music since i was a kid really that was it's the only constant you know, from as for long as I can remember, mm -hmm. music has been my primary obsession. And it wasn't really until I was, well, going through Saturn Return. Yeah, I know you mentioned that the last where, one. Yeah, where, uh, you know, life kind of started kicking my ass. And I wanted to figure out, like, why? Outside of just common sense, like, stupid stupidity like just general my own stupidity like i had i had a sense that there might be something more that could help explain these this sudden what i thought was like a sudden reversal of fortune mm -hmm. and whatever i just started looking for answers and ended up at barnes and nobles in the new age section and started thumbing through <laughs> some books <laughs> and it was like oh my gosh this is so it really began with a life crisis you could say 
Yeah. That's and looking awesome. looking for answers. And so now you 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 have this website. So you know, fredabongastrology dot com. So you can find everything there. I mean, he does like consultation. You have articles in there and uh, testimonials and all about well, you know what you do and the kind of astrology you you, you provide. Mm -hmm. And um, so people and then also you've got um, um, you know what do you call relationship astrology? You also have um location the, the location astrology. Right. Um, right. Yeah, those last two were kind of like the latest or the last two uh, dimensions of astrology that I, you That's know, amazing. began to understand. And, they, and they're really fascinating, um, you know. Yeah. I and mean, that's a lot of people are, of course, interested in the relationship stuff. That's yeah, a, yeah, I'm more more popular. <laughs> yeah, that's more popular. But you know, the little they know about relation about about relocation astrology, that's amazing too. It is. It is really kind of shocking. I mean, I I I can I can go to one place and realize, oh my god, I I feel like I've been here before, and I have to return. Yeah. And when you look at your location astrology relocation, you see why you have a connection to that place. Absolutely. So. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, the, you know, I, I know that we, when we first, when we first had uh, the first interview, we were talking about what are we going to talk about? You know, we did an astrology interview, which is, a, which I, which I would really love to do. And so you go, oh, let's listen. And then we, then we thought about how about, how about finding music in the birth chart, right? Like how your musical talent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, it's a bit, cheating you know what we're doing because we already know these people are musicians right oh yeah, yeah. They, are, they are known to be famous to semi-famous musicians so i'm think i was thinking about this before i signed on like i might have if i had never met these people and they weren't yet you know well known i might have said it might have been obvious to me that they were going to be in the arts Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, might not have known that it was going to be specifically music. So I just have to sort of be upfront about that. It's not, there's a kind of um, wiggle factor, you know, in terms of how accurate one can, I mean, at least for me, I don't have that, you know, level of insight. Um, but, but there's definitely a lot there that would point to art and creativity and, in these cases, what's going to be interesting is to see the recognition because lots of people have musical ability, can play many instruments or can compose or, or, you know, write or something like that, but they don't, we, you never hear about them, right? We don't, generally speaking, they don't become, you know, recognized. And so that's another thing that I think you'll see when we look at these mm -hmm. three charts mm -hmm. as to why these people basically show up in the public eye yeah yeah I, I think i know i know what you mean <laughs> right yeah it's all about the popularity of the birth chart and all that kind of stuff too mm -hmm. yeah. yeah totally right right well you know thank you for choosing i know you we picked um you know i, I know you give us an example right and, and i totally get it because sometimes you but but you can see it in the birth chart the, the musical talent of some of a, even though you don't know who they really are right right yeah i mean right. it's there. yeah and, you know, when we're looking at these, feel free. I know you're, you dabble. I don't know how you may be more than you might be being humble about how much you know about astrology, but feel free to comment because, you know, I think everybody's got probably some other detail that is going to go unrecognized, you know. Well, you know, I mean, I've always loved astrology and I feel like I have a talent for it. You know, it's, it comes I'm sure for me, it comes easy for me. A lot of people don't get it. It would take them forever to learn it. Yep. But well, this actually, would be interesting. Yeah, I'd like to hear your your thoughts on these charts too. But, but I think it's my fun. passion, my passion for for astrology that pushes me to 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 learn more and more. That yep, I, yep. I, I have tons of books in the, in the back. Right, right. Um, I'm sure you're probably a a closet expert. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm just like you. I love the same thing: music, astrology. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So. Thank you for choosing the the three musicians. I know. Do I you want to identify them, and then we can just jump into. Yeah. Okay. So who should we start out with? Uh, well, you know, the three that I I picked, just not not entirely randomly, but um, you know, Kristen Hirsch for obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah, she, she, amazing singer. 
I think we'll probably start with her charts and then Leonard Cohen, who's I thought would be interesting because he's mm -hmm. more of a poet than he is a musician. He's not really known for his musicianship, although yeah. he can, you know, he played guitar and he kind of hunt, hunted and pecked on keyboards, but he's really known for his poetry or his songwriting. Yeah. He, 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 and then someone like right. Prince. Oh, yeah. Who's, you know, a virtuoso on multiple instruments. And I, I got to say, like, I wanted to use his chart because... I actually am kind of baffled by it. And maybe you can, I wanted to show in some sense that sometimes astrology or at least my engagement with it isn't always crystal clear. And I thought it would be interesting to look at a chart with someone who's clearly a musical, musical genius where it's not fully obvious, at least to me, that that would be the case either in his Vedic chart or in his um, Western chart. So yeah, sound good. good. Yeah, sound good. Yeah. All right. So I, I'll share screen. Is that cool? Yeah. 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 Of course. Yes. Okay. Let me see. Um. All right. Yeah. I I think you can. Okay. There you go. All right. You see that? Okay. I can. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, this is the chart of Kristen Hirsch. Um. <clears throat> you know. Is this little bar bugging you? Can you is that? Can you see that? Um, the bar? Oh no! The, uh, no, no, the I menu. got you. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. Yeah. So, like, obviously, you one of the planets that's going to figure prominently in a musician's chart is going to be Venus, mm -hmm. right? And placement by house, by sign, and all. I would say even more importantly, aspect wise, right? Mm -hmm. If we look at Kristen's chart, <clears throat> notice up here, there's a really tight conjunction of Venus and Cancer with Jupiter and Cancer and Mars and Cancer. There's a three planet tight conjunction right up here. Yep, yep. I mean, right off the bat, that gives um, a kind of, uh, expansive quality to the to the Venus activities, which would be anything anything having to do with creating beauty, right? Um, Venus Mars is very passionate. That's a combination for for someone mm -hmm. who has a very magnetic. Oh yeah, because it's it's combining the masculine and the feminine. Mm -hmm. Mars is very aggressive, so a lot of Kristen's music has a kind of can have a very Mm -hmm. aggressive edge to it especially something like 50 foot wave um, but then jupiter is also very close so there's a kind of spiritual component there's a upliftment there's a an element and jupiter's exalted right jupiter in cancer uh, yeah so there's a, a kind of um almost like a a desire to uplift and and teach others right jupiter has that kind of mm -hmm. wanting to bring um insight and enthusiasm and generosity right and so having venus sort of and no, notice they're in the exact same degree yeah if you, you know there's a, oh, that's there's amazing. a mm -hmm. concept there's a concept in the western system of planetary war when two planets are ex occupying the same degree in the same minutes one planet is going to be harmed i don't know if that's actually a western that might be a vedic principle but whatever the case this is a very kind of you get the two what they call benefics right venus and jupiter uh -huh. in tight conjunction so this is a person of very high like ideals a very kind of refined aesthetic a very idealistic right jupiter has a very idealistic Mm -hmm. tendency and it's all in the ninth house right yeah which is the house of idealism so all this artistic stuff and mercury's in here too which i'll talk about in a second but you're getting all this like like super packed and super active ninth house so whatever the creativity it's going to have an idealistic quality mm -hmm. it's going to deliver like higher levels of thinking or higher consciousness or um, in some sense, transport people too, because mm -hmm. ninth house is the house of travel. Yeah. 
It'll be philosophical as well. So you hear all this in Krishna's music. It's, it's sort of, you know, obvious when you listen to it, but astrologically, this is the signature for it. Yep. Oh, you yeah. get Mars and Jupiter in a conjunction. That's pretty much like one of the most, quote unquote, creative combinations possible because you have the, the expansiveness of Jupiter and the energy or the action orientation of Mars. So this is just, to me, this is like a thumbnail sketch of Kristen's work, right? And maybe even her selfhood. The other thing is all three planets are in a trine to Neptune. Yeah, yeah, I was going to look at Neptune as music. Absolutely. It's music. So now you get the, okay, it might take this, it might take the shape of music. This might be a musician rather than a painter, right? Although she's an excellent painter as well. I mean, she's kind of... You know, universally gifted in the arts, but music tends to be her, her religion, if you want. And so, and that's a tight trine too. That's just one mm -hmm. degree um, with both Jupiter, Venus, and Mars. So, so in some sense, you really don't need to look any further for like. Oh yeah, artistic. totally. And being in the first house, that's all about her, right? Right. I mean, her identity is in this spiritual, idealistic musical kind of um spiritual like in scorpio so there's a real depth there there's a real kind of mm -hmm. um, complexity so so right there i mean there's it's so obvious in the chart right it's so clear um now mercury is also part of this group but mercury is in a really interesting position because it's conjunct, meaning right next to the midheaven, right? Within three degrees. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Mercury is a planet of communication and writing, speaking. Now she has also written, you know, how many books, right? So she's a writer as well. And so there's a versatility. Mer Mercury has this kind of versatility thing. It's kind of, you know, it rules Gemini. So there's like multiple avenues of expression and um you know kind of um sort of renaissance man or woman quality when you get a mercury because they they they're quick learners and they can sort of uh learn something very quickly and then do something with it right the other piece that's interesting and that kind of completes the picture at least as far as music writing is the sun, which is the person's identity, right? Mm -hmm. It's in the 10th house. So this person is going to make a mark in the world, generally yeah. speaking. And in right? Leo too. And in Leo. Yeah. So it's, this is what they, it's a power position. This is a person who's going to make waves, you know, and that sun is also has a connection to Neptune. It's a square. So there's some unease about, maybe feeling a little alienated, right? Or, you know, out of, out of touch with kind of um, identity in the world, right? This is the 10th house and the first house. So there's a kind of, you know, some discomfort with showing up in the world and being not being perceived properly or something like that. But it, it enhances the, the Neptunian inspired quality that's the one thing I would add about the Neptune. Venus is kind of, it's art and beauty, but it's more craftsmanship, making things beautiful, making them look nice. Mm -hmm. Neptune is the piece that brings in the, the inspired kind of almost otherworldly, like where did this come from mm -hmm. thing, right? It's kind of out of the ethers. Um, and her, her work is definitely one of a kind. So it has that, where does this even come from? You know. Um, so I don't know if you have anything to add. That would be like a very quick. No, I I think you know the zero zero degrees and Mercury is also like like zero is right on the on the cusp of that tenth house. You know. Yep. Which is very special. And Leo is about shining on the stage, and that's exactly what she does. And yeah. Right on. Yeah, and then you know I don't know if you use rulerships. Yeah, this is much 
more important in the Vedic system, which we'll see in a minute, but like, you know, you've got the 10th tenth, tenth house is Leo. So its ruler is the sun yeah. and the sun is placed in the 10th house. That's, yeah. that's really that's powerful. Real. Yeah. It very powerful. That there's going to be very strong energy in the career and showing up in the world and making a mark. Um, yeah. And, 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 and Jupiter rules the, the, you know, the ninth house. So, and that you got Jupiter up there. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. there's a lot of like, you know, kind of strengthening placements by sign and by house that kind of, you yeah. know, support some prominence, right? Pro this is like a prominence position, having the sun up here, mm -hmm. um, you know, and interesting, you know, if you've got Pluto and Uranus in the 11th house, so friends would be kind of maybe eccentric or, you know, have yeah. a <laughs> I, I got that too over there. It's kind right. of, it's um it's a it's uh what do you call that uh uh is it's um what do you call that is it's um sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's when you were born a certain time you're a lot of them are are in the eleventh house <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's generational generational right 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 yeah mm -hmm. right on yeah um there's probably a lot more but I I think maybe just we can come back to this but I want to like. Yeah, no, no, that's how While we're, we're thinking. A, so, and you're absolutely right about her. Yeah, totally. The Vedic, so just to orient you, and because I, I don't know if you or anyone who's listening or watching has been exposed to the Vedic, this is what the Vedic chart looks like. It's a square rather than a circle, which already kind of indicates a, um, a kind of more nuts and bolts, like practical. Mm -hmm um orientation in the system it's a primarily like focused on prediction rather than personality but you can use it for both the other thing is that you probably know this but just so it's said the, the western system is based on the tropical zodiac right which is seasonal it's based on the seasonal shifts the equinoxes etc the vedic system is based on the sidereal zodiac which is astronomically correct meaning so what what does that mean well in the western system kristen has this, a leo sun in this system her son's in cancer why because of the procession of the equinox right the earth wobbles on its axis and over the last 2000 years which is when the western system was kind of like made made solid mm -hmm. The Earth has wobbled backwards. The magnetic north has moved backwards against the constellations, which is what all that age of Aquarius stuff is about. So this tracks that movement. The sidereal zodiac is tracking the, the backwards movement of the Earth. So when Christian was born, the sun was actually in the constellation of Cancer. Vis visually, if you looked up in the sky, telescopically that's where and all the other planets basically at this point in time are moved are in, backwards like 23 24 degrees from where they are in the western chart so oftentimes people will have a different rising sign and their sun sign will be different it all shakes out in the end to sort of how could it not it's the same person right same life mm -hmm. but the, the interpretation is different Okay, so so that's the chart. It's the same signs, same planets, um, and it uses twelve houses. This part I won't really discuss because this is not what we're talking about. But just so it's you know what you're looking at. You know, I mentioned the Vedic system is primarily focused on prediction, and so there's this dimension of it or aspect of it called the Dasha system, which just basically means planetary periods. And it's like a little kind of roadmap or blueprint of time periods in a person's life. And they're based on the planets in the chart, right? Um, so, and they follow a kind of continuous and static loop. Like for example, Rahu, by the way, R-A, just for anyone who's not familiar with the Vedic system, uh, is the North Node. It's, it's given the designation as a planet in this system, not a, or it has a kind of planet-like effect, and it goes by the name of Rahu, and it's the south node is K2, 
and we can talk about what those mean. But um, so she, so Kristen would be in a Rahu Dasha right now. That's sort of, and each each planet has a different number of length associated with it. Rahu's eighteen years, Jupiter's seventeen, Saturn's twenty, I think, or Venus is twenty, Mars is like ten. Mm -hmm. Right, so and moon seven, and so I don't got them all. You know, they're in those ranges, and Mercury's are like eighteen. So, so when you go through, usually there's a shift. We've seen in the Dasha planet. There's usually some kind of life shift that also coincides, and that's for another yeah. discussion. Okay, we're not talking about that, but that's just so you know what this is. But in terms of musical. What we're going to look at in the Vedic uh, view is not Venus in Cancer and Jupiter. I mean, now, of course, they're not in Cancer. They're in Gemini. And they're in the ninth house still. The sun is in the 10th house, but Mercury gets captured by the 10th house because this is a whole, whole sign house system. Mm -hmm. So she uh, still has Neptune in the south node in the first. Still has Mars jupiter and venus in the ninth and now sun and mercury in the tenth um without getting too complicated house rulerships are kind of the most important thing in the vedic system mm -hmm. so if we're looking at musical ability you want to look at third house or fifth house from the vedic perspective so there's no planets in the third house but the ruler is jupiter Mm -hmm. So you find out where the ruler is and you look at what it's kind of uh, company it's keeping. Jupiter's in the ninth house. Ninth house is considered to be the most, this is a Vedic uh, principle. Ninth house is considered to be the, the house where God gives you his or her grace. It's the luckiest house. It's the house of luck. It still has Jupiterian qualities, but it has this quote unquote special like uh, giftedness quality to it. So Kristen has third house ruler in the ninth house. That means that she's probably going to be have a gift with either writing. Third house is also writing or music or something like that. And now we know, okay, so we look at, well, who's with it? Venus. So we know there's going to be some art happening, right? And Mars, which rules the second house. So there's maybe some second house is the house of poetry in the Vedic tradition. So this person could be a poet, right? Mm -hmm. So you're getting this. And the ninth house is also the house of travel, as we know. So this, a touring musician, right? Someone who does a lot of travel. You look at all these planets in the ninth house, and the two of them are benefics. This is a person who has a kind of a quote unquote gift for a lot of travel which she has done much of in her life. And, it's so um, true. and the first house ruler, which would be the person's, what they identify with and what they feel is like close to their selfhood. Again, we, ha we have Neptune and K2 there, but the ruler of Libra is Venus. And where's Venus? Also in the ninth house. Okay, someone who's interested in, and with Jupiter, the third house ruler. So you're getting this kind of feedback loop. This person is really kind of destined, so to speak, mm -hmm. for something in the arts, probably music, a lot of travel, um, and um, Jupiter, let's see, rules the sixth house as well. This is a maybe a side note. Sixth house is the house of health, right? Health and healing. And those of you who don't know Christian, she once considered going to medical school oh. before music, before she made the decision. But, you know, Venus, I think, is kind of orienting. And then you got Mars there. So there's a kind of, you know, uh, you could see how that would have been a, a, a kind of option. Okay, so there you go. There's that. Again, we see the music. Oh, wow. It works in both, in both uh, systems. Yep. Sure. And you've got the sun again, sun, sun and Mercury in the tenth. So you're gonna get this is what they in both systems, when the sun is in the tenth house, the person makes a mark. Generally speaking, if there isn't a strong Saturn influence that kind of 
tamps it down, the person is going to make some kind of mark. Interesting thing is um, Mercury is the ninth house ruler in the 10th house. That's That creates what they call a Raja Yoga or mm -hmm. Royal Union. It's maybe too much for this discussion, but it just creates a kind of a supercharged capacity to combine the ninth and 10th house. Ninth house being luck, travel, and the 10th house, you know, these are like, um, you know, a 10th house is an angular house, right? Mm -hmm. So it it's the manifestation house. First, seventh, first, fourth, seventh, and 10th are houses of manifestation. Um, the ninth house is a house of luck. So when you put the manifestation and the luck together, you get a kind of, not a guarantee, but something like a guarantee that this domain of life will will show up it won't be like a a maybe it'll be a yes mm, wow um last thing maybe and then we can we can move on is mercury is the rule of the ninth but it's also a ruler of virgo no oh. in the 12th house so it brings 12th house energy to the 10th house now what does that mean aside from the fact that it deals with like the collective unconscious and the dream world right um, hidden things, right? There's a hidden quality. So that would mean that there's, when you have the 12th house ruler connected to the 10th house somehow, it's going to kind of obscure your visibility somewhat in the public eye because the 12th house is what they call a hidden house. Mm -hmm. So you might be, you might not become world famous in like a household name, but you might have a underground like recognition, especially overseas, because the twelfth house has to do with foreign countries. Um, and you know the, you know Kristen and the Muses and or other bands have also have done fine in the United States, but most of the recognition has come from abroad, generally speaking. So so that's that connection between the twelfth and the tenth. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of information in Vedic astrology. Which yeah, is I know, it's a little overwhelming. Tell me if I'm uh, overwhelming you. No, I... no, no, I, I like it. I like it. I don't know other people, but yeah, totally. I totally like it, yeah. So, you know, that's maybe we can we can jump to the next one if you'd like. Um, maybe look at yeah. Leonard I don't know if you've ever looked at his chart before. No, I never did, but, you know, I'm a big fan of Leonard Cohen. <laughs> Yeah, I love his music. And yeah, I sort of I came late to his music, but I I really found myself compelled by his work and and him as a person. Um, again, maybe just to sort of follow the same uh, technique. Where's Venus? Right, <laughs> Venus, exact conjunction with Neptune. Wow. Right. Whenever you have a, like a really tight conjunctions, it, that's going to show up. That's the way I see it. It's like mm -hmm. you're going to know this about this person, whatever the if it's a conjunction with an angle like the midheaven or the descendant or the fourth house cusp or the first house. These are going to be recognizable features of the person's uh, identity and personality. I mean, he's well known for being super romantic dreamy yeah totally uh, mm -hmm. totally unrealistic about <laughs> relationships totally uh high ideals like unmatchable you know he's just too he's too much um uh idealism but a lot of romanticism yeah his music is definitely dreamy very dreamy and, and very uh, dreamy notice though that venus is in virgo it's fallen it's debilitated right yeah. So that means it's probably going to be problems like in relationships. And uh, if we're talking about the relationships now, I was told early on, and I think it's true that people who have born with Venus and Virgo often make really good artists, you, it, which sounds counterintuitive, but it's because the way it was put to me, and I agree, it makes people very picky about art. Mm -hmm. Virgo is very picky critical discerning and so if you have venus there and he's got the sun so he's got all this 
Virgoan and he's a Virgo uh, rising. So he's really, I mean, he's known for like spending years on crafting lyrics to a song. Like it's not good enough. <laughs> it's not right. It's not perfect. And, right? and he's an amazing songwriter. <laughs> it's yeah. Just, it's just crazy. Yeah. And it's all, you know, this is all 12th house. So he's kind of a recluse too. Yeah, I mean, yeah he is. Yeah. But here's the other piece that I think really kind of identifies why we know about him. And we'll see more about that in the Vedic chart, but look where the sun is exactly conjunct the ascendant. Yeah. Right. So people have sun in the first house, but especially conjunct the ascendant. They have a radiant quality. They just have a, people look at them and they have a kind of like, kingly or regal or like mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and he's it's well known that he just had this charisma maybe would be the way to put it although he was very kind of self-deprecating and shy in a lot of ways because he's got all the sun is actually in the 12th house mm -hmm. just by a few minutes and um but that to me is what made it possible for him to manifest a, a career in music you know, there's a kind of quality of attraction there oh yeah um, definitely and, wait, and you got you Mercury in the first? go ahead no i i remember him being in in a monastery right at one point and that's uh, the 12th house absolutely yeah. yeah so he would be drawn to the spiritual life this is a 12th house is a spiritual it's explicitly about spirituality and trying to seek enlightenment in the vedic tradition mm -hmm. A little less about that. It's more about isolation in the Western tradition. So either way, you end up in a, a monastery. You're <laughs> you're isolating, right? Um, you know. So that to me is like you, you, you could look at other things, but I really and, and Mercury in the first, which is the the writer, right? The interested in words. Um, but to me, it's this kind of lineup. This Venus, Neptune, Sun conjunct the Ascendant that is primarily what we recognize about Leonard Cohen. You also have Jupiter in a trine to the Midheaven, right? Which gives that religious, philosophical desire to reach the masses, to uplift them. And then you've got Saturn also in a trine to the Midheaven. So there's a grand trine. Oh, yeah, yeah. With Jupiter, Saturn, and the Midheaven, which, and Saturn has that kind of depressive. Oh, yeah. You know, like, uh, yeah. Dour, sober, uh, serious quality. So you, you clearly that resonates with what we know about Leonard Cohen's work. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to add that's jumping out at you, but. Um, yeah, but you know, I, I don't know. I don't want to really go too too deep in there. But the North Node is also on the fifth house, which is uh yeah yeah, which is where where he is uh with yeah that that's the you know the the house of fun, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, is there anything else here? Well, let's take a quick look at his Vedic. Let's see. I gotta get rid of that. Yeah, you know Leonard Cohen, uh, "Famous Blue Rinko" is my favorite song. And uh, that, I think that's one of the like the the most beautiful song uh, of, of of his. You know, I, yeah. I, and there's so many, of course, but that one is yeah, dark, I, mysterious and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, you know, if we look at the Vedic, obviously, you, you get. Some of the placements are the same, right? In this system, he's still a Virgo rising. The sun is in the first. Mercury's in the first. In Virgo, right, it backs up into Virgo, so it gets its exaltation status. So, you know, he was highly eloquent, mm -hmm. right? And um, was known for that being, like, very uh, well-spoken and articulate. Yeah, that's uh, the Virgo. <laughs> 
That's right. And they're very complicated, Virgos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's him completely. The, and you got Jupiter in the second house, right? This is, that's a kind of poetic, again, in the Vedic tradition, uh, the second house is the house of, of poetry, among other things. Third house would be the house of prose. <clears throat> Third, second house is poetry. And so he's got Jupiter there, which is that the gift for, and as all of his work had that religious, philosophical, kind of reaching, seeking quality. Idealism is always sort of part of that signature, right? Um, the interesting thing here is that the sun, right again, right next to the ascendant. So that solar quality is a real, uh, it's interesting because usually if people have sun in the first house or right on the ascendant, they feel like they want to be seen. They want recognition. Mm -hmm. In his case, the sun rules the 12th house, rules Leo, which is a house of, of being hidden. It's a house of spirituality and all that stuff and sex, right? This is in the Vedic tradition. This is the house of what they call bed pleasures, which explicitly <laughs> sex, but spirituality, isolation. So the 12th house ruler is conjunct his ascendant. It's a kind of paradox or a, they're kind of opposing tendencies. The sun wants to be out in the world and recognized and be visible and be kind of in some sense like worshipped mm -hmm. but the 12th house wants to stay hidden and and work on enlightenment and figure out what god is and all that stuff so there's that kind of real obvious no, uh combination for what we recognize him as um the third house this is the interesting thing i, I was saying when we first started that the second house is the house of poetry. Third house is the house of musical ability, working with the hands, right? Because it's connected to Gemini. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also the house of the quality of a person's singing voice. Wow. Second house is their speaking voice. Third house is their singing voice. Now, we don't have any planets there, but it, the ruler is Scorpio, of Scorpio is Mars. The ruler is in the 11th house in Cancer. Mars is debilitated in Cancer, which would suggest that his, he might have a kind of unusual or atypical, and it's with the South Node, it's with K2, right? So his voice, his singing voice would, might be not tr like classically, you know, beautiful, which, you know, he had his own thing. He was more of a speak singer than a singer. But just one more thing about the just the, the South Node in the K2 in the Vedic tradition isn't just about your past lives, right? What you've already accomplished in the Western system. That, that's the way it's seen. It also has a quality of, of being like a mystical, introverted uh spiritual like really precise really picky it's kind of like like a virgo quality to it so his third house ruler is with k2 pretty close within four degrees or so so again his singing voice would have this kind of spiritual quality right it'd have a mystical quality right yeah, and he does which he does which is um what else would I say about this? Maybe the only other thing I would add is uh, that Mercury is the first house ruler because it rules Virgo and the 10th house ruler, career house, right? 10th house ruler is in the first house. When you see that, that usually means that the person has to do a career where they are the focus, right? Because it's the first house is me and, and my selfhood, my physical self. And the 10th house is the career. So it was sort of no doubt that his career, he was going to be the center of his career. He wasn't going to be working for somebody. He would be the focus. And then you get that kind of emphasized by the fact that the sun is also there. So he's going to be the focus of the career. Yeah, it's totally him. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, let me... Um, wow, that's amazing. 
I know it's, it's. I mean, there's so much more. To, I mean, a lot of people think that's is that is that simple. It's not. <laughs> so many things, and Vedic astrology is like. Uh, I I know very little, but I I I'm just loving it. I hope it's not too like again like the technical stuff. Can be no, like, no, people I, can just tune I, out because they're like, I don't know, Yuraja Yoga, blah blah blah. Like, <laughs> well, people that people that like astrology are listening. <laughs> So maybe this is the this is the last chart, and I try to maybe you can help me. Like, this is Prince's chart, which I you know I could if we start with Venus, okay, we've got an opposition to Neptune, so there's a musical connection there, right? Mm -hmm. It's a tense one. It's not there's a kind of it's not necessarily harmonious. Other than that. Um, you know, he's a Gemini. I don't really see a lot of the sun is hidden away and it's kind of on the cusp between the seventh and the eighth house. So there's a kind of reclusive quality there, but a very deep scorpionic sexual. And that's totally him. <laughs> that's totally him. And yeah. now this is what this is what made started making sense to me. He does have two planets close to angles. Pluto is exactly conjunct in nine degree. Right. And the relic degree. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, he is Plutonian for sure. Right. His, his career is all about this sex and death and rebirth and transform. I mean, he underwent transformation. But his name and his name, it looks like the Pluton Pluto glyph, doesn't it? It looks somewhat similar to yeah, that. Yeah. Like, like his, uh, yeah. Like his symbol, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, that's good. And, you know, and, and so if we look at rulerships, he's a Scorpio rising. So that's co-ruled by Mars and Pluto. Well, Pluto, first house ruler is conjunct in midheaven. So that would tell you that he's wants to make a mark in the world, right? He's going to be career focused. Um, Mars is over here in the fourth, kind of nearing the fifth, but it's, it's zero degrees of Aries, right? So it's early degree here, but it's exalted or it's in its own sign. So there's a kind of drive but the moon opposite the pluto is i thought that's a real complex aspect right there's a lot of deep feeling and you know pain and need to it, it's this and combined with i think the sun opposite saturn that kind of when you see that sun opposite Saturn or sun square Saturn, these people really feel like they have to do something mm -hmm. to make themselves feel worthwhile in the world because Saturn has that kind of really judgmental or like um, harsh, like quality to it. And when it's opposite the sun or, or square the sun, it's, there's this, narrative in the head that says you're not good enough right <laughs> you're not measuring up right you, you are lacking and so people who have that unconsciously often feel like they have to prove to the world that they are good enough so that gives a kind of drive i don't know if, you know again i'm if i looked at this chart i would not have personally saw world famous musician I, I know yeah a little bit yeah. baffled by it um well you know the interesting thing is the moon which is um and and this you know it's in the can't it's in the house of the you know the the home and and the moon can't yep. the fourth right but he has the moon, the moon there mm -hmm. um, connected to mother maybe i don't know possibly yeah um you know there's a little bit more info when you look at the vedic um you see, i see a little bit more potential for fame for sure i still don't necessarily see like obvious musical genius right the first thing i would say is he's got rahu in the first house in this system so he's got the north node in the first house K2, as I said before, is very introverted, it's very mystical, it's spiritual, it's very detached. It doesn't really want to participate in the world. It wants to go and just find God, you know, off in the wilderness. Its opposite, Rahu, 
wants everything, wants all the goodies of the world. So people have Rahu, it's very extroverted. So people who have Rahu in the first house or 10th house are often very big presences. Mm -hmm. Rahu is kind of like Jupiter. It enlarges things and it, and it kind of like um, ramps up or, or makes more like, like um, fiery in some sense, mm -hmm. what house it's in, right? So it's in his first house. So it would give this like, um, it's connected to, in some sense, uh, has a fame, let's put it this way. It has a fame-like quality to it. People who have Rahu in the 10th in particular often achieve mass fame, right? Because the 10th house is the masses and Rahu has a kind of dealing with the masses as well. So that would be the first thing. Um, but more, I think, obvious, at least Vedic, is that the 10th house ruler is the moon, career. It's in the fifth house of creativity, right? arts and the fifth house in the vedic tradition is it's like the ninth house where there's a certain kind of you could say gift that you get from god or in this case they would call it past life stuff mm -hmm. when you have the the tenth house ruler in the fifth house usually it means you're going to get the benefit of some hard work that you did in previous lifetimes where you you achieve a you know, fame or, or recognition in the career. That's, that's the best I can, I can do with this chart when it comes to identifying, I, you know, again, this is, I was hoping you could help me because I'm, I'm, I'm a little perplexed by what the signatures are for, you know, either in the, the Western or the Vedic, like I can see fame, but I don't necessarily see his virtuosity, his, you know, his general musicianship. Um, you know, maybe some of your, your viewers or listeners who have looked at this chart have some insight into that, but. I well, you know, I can, I can, I can see the Gemini in him because the Gemini is multi, you know, they're all about the mind ruled by Mercury, right? And oh yeah. Yeah. He's very it's, versatile. It's, it's, yeah. That's why he's so good with his, with it, playing the the guitar, with his hand, using his hands in every way, and his lyrics, right? Because it's all about communication and using the mind, and and being in the eighth house is deep, right? So that's a deep yeah, yeah house of um. I would totally agree. Yeah, and you know he he does have um, he also rules um you know uh, other people's money, so he's got um, uh, his fame there, right, with the sun. Yep. I see. Yeah. Agreed. And then this system, he also has the sun stays in the eighth house. <clears throat> I, I guess what I'm, what I'm confused about is I don't know that this jumps out at me as musician in the way that the last two charts kind of were really obvious. Kristen's chart and Leonard Cohen's chart were obvious like musician and then musician slash poet songwriter. They're really clear. Um, in this one, I don't, you know, I know that it has a high accuracy rating for birth time and everything by the rod and dad and base, but yeah, this is one of those things where I'm like, I don't know. Well, you know, he, when, when he died, okay. I remember when he died, I, I was, I was flying into San Francisco. Okay. And then I, his, um, the San Francisco airport was lit up in purple. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, he definitely yeah. got the fame. Everybody he did. Loved yeah. Him. Right. Absolutely. And that that is evident in the Vedic chart for sure. And, you know, you could make an argument for Pluto. Yeah, I think. Right I, on, I mean, that that does kind of re suggest some real impact right in the in the public realm in the terms of the career. I just wouldn't know that it was going to be music. That That's kind of where because people have Sun and Gemini. And lots of people have Sun and Gemini in the eighth house and they're not musicians like that's not a a kind of guarantee that this would be the musical, one of the musical geniuses of our time. I don't really know um, where that shows I don't know. up. I mean, that shows up. you know, I wonder if that's it. Is it, I don't know. I mean, 
I, you know, I, I don't, to be honest, I don't know everything about Prince. Mm. You know, I, I don't know exactly what, what what time he was born or all that other stuff, you know? Right. Uh, but but it doesn't matter anyway, because even, even the time was off, I mean, we'll still have, uh, you know, the, the planets. It's just, you we, would. we won't you have would. the ascendant or the, or anything like that, but. But I, I could see the 12th house being, I mean, with Neptune there, that makes everything mm -hmm. kind of blurry, right? <laughs> and, and maybe he doesn't want to be seen. <laughs> yeah. I, I even mean, kinda, eight, yeah. Yeah. He was kind of shy. He was shy. You know, <laughs> he was a, he was a, he could peacock on stage, but, you know, off stage, he's a shy guy for sure. Um, Anyway, you know, that's my quick run through the three charts. I don't know. I mean, no, I mean, you know, I, I think people would, would want to know so much about their, I, 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 if any musicians are out there, I mean, you would see it, right? You would just see the, the signs of the, of the music, the music. Generally. Part. Yeah. I mean, I've looked at a lot of musicians charts and I generally, you know, um, and I've done readings for people who I They're didn't musicians. know were musicians. I generally do see it. I, I kind of wanted to. So yeah. it's mostly is it, is it mostly the Venus placement, right? It's uh, it's more I I I gotta say I I rely on the Vedic more for telling me what you know Venus placement will tell you potential for creativity and an interest at least in making things beautiful. For mm -hmm. me, it's more is there a lot of third house or fifth house activity, or is the sun you can get something like the sun uh, conjunct Venus or some, some kind of relationship between the moon and Venus or something like that, where, because, because the traditionally Vedic system doesn't use the outer planets. It doesn't use Neptune mm -hmm. or Uranus. So you can't rely on it. I use them because they work, you know? Um, but I, I could, it would be hard for me to give a, a hard and fast rule about what it, but yes, you have to absolutely consider Venus and its aspects and its placement and its sign. In the Vedic, you have to look at the third house in particular, second house for songwriting, third house for musicianship and singing and performing. Third house is like a performing mm -hmm. house. And then if you want to see, and the fifth house would be creativity generally. Mm -hmm. But if you want to see if this person, if, they may have musical ability, but are they going to get recognition? Then you have to look at the first and tenth, generally speaking. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, I mean, you, you take all of those into perspective, right? You could be a musician, but it doesn't mean you're going to get world fame, right? You right. could be talented in so many ways, but yep. it's, it's really the placement of the tenth and uh, something that in, in you know in the in the um, in the angles, the angular, the angular, which is angular houses, which is more powerful, right? Yep, absolutely. And you can also, it, yeah, I, I've I've taken a look at someone like Nick Drake's chart, and I'm not sure if his time is right, but I, he, his fame came posthumously, right after he died. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so sometimes you can see there's a connection between like the twelfth house or the eighth house and the tenth house. So you could, in other words, you could see potential for musicianship or or creativity or or songwriting in a chart but if their 10th house is being like you could say affected by something to do with the eighth house or the 12th it might mean that they don't get recognition until they until they pass on mm. right hmm which has happened many times, right? People don't discover someone's new work. That's true. They're, they're obscure in their lifetime and then they die and all of a sudden their work is like um, discovered. Wow. I mean, there's so much more to astrology. It's not It's not simple. And uh, I know you, um, I mean, even though people are listening, they probably go, oh, okay, well, you know, how do I, how would I learn more about it? The best thing to do is just get a, a reading just get a reading with Fred because <laughs> because he he doesn't really go really I mean our, the topic here is very much just simple, but if anybody wanted to yeah. get a more ideal reading, because everything yeah. is not just it's not just it's not just looking at one or two charts everything is so connected right it depend depends on the aspects and and uh, 
you know, right? It's, it's an aspect. Yeah, completely. It's um, very holistic and, and you can't, you know, you really can't look at everything in ice in things in isolation. You have to see them all together. Um, but you know, you can you can take out specific capacities and and examine whether or not they're like how how prominent they're going to be in the chart. Um, yeah. So you, you can do piecemeal, but if you want to do a you really want to know who the person is, you have to look at everything. You can't just do what we're doing and look at these, right exactly yeah you know. it, it involves a lot of things it talks about the you know, like we talked about the popularity as well and mm -hmm. and the, you know the trines and all the aspects of that that's another thing that's another that's another one then they have the north node and that kind of thing too and all this other stuff so yeah it's sort of endless <laughs> I, mean, I know <laughs> <laughs> but gosh that's it's amazing you know just just uh just knowing these things you know it, it makes you want to think more yeah which is either good or bad you know you can you can sort of i mean like me i get a, obsessive about these things and um <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you know um just going back to your I, I know you have a website and uh i just wanted people to check out your website i appreciate that yeah i wonder yeah, if it's you just it read about astrology I, I i it's been up for a while and i kind of modified it and okay do you want to you, know, you, you want to pull it up i don't if you want to oh gosh um, just so that we can see the kind of since you're already on there oh god um it might take a minute uh, sorry i didn't mean that yeah, there you go. You find it that that's how fast you find it too. If you, if you Google it, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so I'm so glad that I found this because I wouldn't have known because you you know you don't say things. We only talk about your musical stuff, and then I'm the one that brought this up. And I go, I, I know I'm not really good at again. Like, <laughs> I I mean I'm good at making the stuff. I made the website and I spent a lot of time doing it, but I sort of have this magical thinking that i just put it there and then people will find it like <laughs> well, i don't have to, I don't have to say anything else like, what is your sun sign again well western i'm scorpio oh yeah that's right yeah yeah but vedic i'm li uh, libra oh just like me i'm a libra and uh, i'm a scorpio ascendant ah yeah. but i don't know how i became a libra my, my friend did a reading for me i'm a libra mm -hmm. in that regard but um okay. yeah i guess so <laughs> yep uh, yeah, I have a Leo moon in the in the Western and Libra rising. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is um, an example of what you do, right? You do relocation charts that people are, are looking to move and they don't know if they should go. Yeah, to... yeah. I mean, uh, most of my readings are, are once I have a, you know, my kind of longstanding clients just check in for the six month one year but it has to be usually it has to begin with the full readings just so we know that we're that i'm understanding the chart properly and that you know that that i'm interpreting it correctly and that it's it's matching the person's experience um yeah yeah and then the relationship is which is a synastry or uh, yeah i do i do the synastry chart in the uh, composite chart which yeah. is that's a really powerful tool. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, it's so, it's so helpful to sort of identify what the, the kind of the blessings and the curses of a, of a relationship, <laughs> of a relationship are going to be and where the problem areas and where the, you know, the joy is going to be. Yeah. Um, That's true. It's uncanny how, how kind of spot on those two together. I know they are. Yeah. Yeah, they can be. Yeah, that's why you you feel at ease with it with a person, or you feel like, oh, I don't want to be around that person because of that. And uh, oh, totally. Yeah, I mean, it's like a picture of the chemistry between two people. Mm -hmm. You know, the way I've understood it is that the synastry is like the 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 chemistry, the day to day. Like when you're in the presence of this person, how do you feel? Well, what what kind of stuff is is um, sparking, or where are the struggles? The composite chart is more like it's a picture of the relationship itself, the, the combined. What is this relationship about? Some people can 
really, you know, let's say they have a synastry chart that is really harmonious, but it's more about a career. Mm, Composite yeah. chart is showing that the purpose of the relationship is the career, not romantic. That's kind of how you use the two, or that's how I use the, the two um, together. And then just just really quickly on this uh, relate on the on the relocation chart. Mm -hmm. Just so that people would know what that is. So if somebody's like moving, they want to move to a country or to, um, you know, they want to see if they're, if they're going to be successful there. All of these lines, they represent something. Some of them are a moon line, the sun line, and they all reflect something, right? And so Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, they have the, this is just a kind of representative uh, map. This is the Western um, map of the, the lines. I use this in addition to the, the actual relocation chart, meaning would look at this chart recalculated for the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the location, but um, yeah, these lines and the, and the, what they call midpoints are really, really like um, powerful indicators of like what, what areas are like hotspots for certain things? Like, you know what I mean? If you're looking for career success, you go to where the sun is either on the, the ascendant or on the midheaven, or there's a sun Jupiter midpoint, right? Those kinds of things. Yeah. So they all, and not all these lines are going to be present in every single country. <laughs> it just depends, right? No. I mean, when no. you expand this, you're going to see where exactly it goes. Yep. Have you done that before? Have you? Yeah. Had I mean, I, I didn't uh, nobody have nobody read it for me, but I know how to I kind of know how to use it. So I use uh I have a line going down Australia. Oh it's cool. You know what? I, I just you just made me think of something. I have um, I mean, I'll just pull up the, this thing now. I have my north node. I think I mentioned this last time. Um my north node on the midheaven goes right through Hawaii. Oh yeah. So, oh wow! Oh, you, you're like, I, I just want to show it to you because I you uh, made me think of it. Um, where? How do I get there? Uh, USA states. Yeah, I start. Oh, here we go. Individual states. Um, and so you know, there's so. Oh yeah! Wow. So there's, there's Rahu on the midheaven, right next to Honolulu. So what I don't does know where you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in Honolulu. So what does that mean for you? That's your Well, opinion. so Rahu on the Midheaven is kind of where you, again, Rahu has that kind of oh, that, uh, destiny. That's the North Node. Yeah, okay. It's the North Node. The yeah. North Node, sorry. So this is a place where you can, in some sense, get some recognition or you meet people who help you get recognition. And here we are talking. <laughs> I know, yeah, and, and maybe you're meant to come here. Have you been here before? I would love to. Yeah, gosh, you never been here, right? I never, never. Oh been. yeah, yeah. I understand. You know, I know that the, the Filipino population is rather large out there, and that's another yeah, investment yeah. for me. And there's there's a lot of uh. It's imponsive. I I miss it. Well, then it may, maybe you need to come here. <laughs> I know, I know. I've, I've absolutely considered it. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, there, there's an example. Like so. Uh, oh, yeah, so, you know, it's true. It's really true. I mean, I totally believe in astrology in every way. I mean, it, the way it, I put it is that it's it's not belief because belief is sort of like a not fact based, right? You're not it's not reality tested. To me, I it works. I, I can't. It's yeah, not belief. It works it's observation me. of the the accuracy of it it's not to say that it is a hundred percent accurate it's to say that it is far above just random chance oh yeah yeah no i i've seen things about my chart that is true mm -hmm. and that that's that, i'm not just saying that i mean it really is i mean i'm still i'm still learning astrology we're constantly learning i mean there's so many things popping up and i'm like oh wow okay now let me try to figure that out do you do readings for people no, no, I'm not even, I'm not even like, you should. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not like you. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I think eventually I will because my progress chart is in Aquarius right now, but pretty soon you'll go into Pisces. 
Mm. Okay. And then when, when it goes into Pisces, it might be even, then it becomes a spiritual yeah. thing. Well, you know, <laughs> send me, I don't know. You know, I don't know if you ever want me to do a reading, I'd do it pro bono. Like just, no, no, you no. helped me out so much. I would happily do that. <laughs> you know, thank you. Well, gosh, you know, thank you so much for doing this. I mean, it's, pleasure. It's, it's so helpful. And I think many people would, would, um, uh, would really appreciate no, just knowing the basics. And then if they want to, dig if they want to find out more they really need to get a reading because it's all about then then they, you can focus on that person and not you know it's more focus absolutely yeah, and that's, 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 so that's the important thing mm -hmm. yeah. so if anybody wanted to check you out again uh i'm gonna let me see um you know i actually have your yeah so it's fred abong astrology.com yep and then the, your, your music page you know if anybody wanted you fred know abong music it's <laughs> and those then, are my two yeah. things no, that's great. I, you know, you this Fred Abong astrology needs to be a link over here. <laughs> a link over where? A link on your on your music page. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I haven't I haven't uh, put the two together. You're right. Yeah, and then of course you're you're also with Kristen with Kristen, right? With her with her trio, her, her group. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you guys gonna do anything um in the future coming up? Uh, un uncertain. Possibly, maybe next year, maybe in the fall of next year. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, Fred Abong was the basis for uh, throwing muses and belly in the early days, which is which is uh the four AB time, no? That um when yeah. you know. I'm an old I'm an old person. No, I said that's a, that's, a, that's my favorite time for throwing muses and belly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, thank thank you so much for for doing thank this you. and um. I I I'm still learning a lot, and I learned quite a bit. And now I'm now I'm kind of eager to figure out um if I if I should study uh Vedic astrology now, but maybe maybe not yet. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, you you could give it a shot because when, there's a initial hurdle just learning the lingo. But after that, if you already know something about astrology, you're, oh, yeah. you're more I, than halfway there. I, I think I would I would I would grasp it pretty fast. I, I think I, so too. I, but I think, um, but it, it, it's not easy. I, I can see because it's not easy to learn this stuff. I mean, this is like a, and I could see that because you're a Scorpio. Scorpios are deep and they're, and they're very intelligent people. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Scorpio ascendant, but I totally understand that that's how you get your, your gift for astrology. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And, you know, thank you. you know, Shauna did, introduced me to you. So I'm so grateful to her. Shameless promotion PR as always. Yeah, she's great. She's been a huge asset for me. So, you know, I, I well, maybe we'll do another interview, you know, especially when you come up with your, uh, when you, when you release your piano bass um, release. Yeah, your, I'd your appreciate project. that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay. One second. Like, thank you, Fred. Fred Abong. Thank you. Fred Abong music.com. Fred Abong astrology.com. All right. One second. Thanks, Fred. One one moment. <laughs>